Oh, don't worry about Edward. Crusty old bastards like that never die. Do you realize how lucky we are to survive that fire? They haven't even found Nicholas's body. He was your wife's son. You weren't gonna say anything. I got nothing to say. Well, at least Edward's still alive. But my God, he looks so fragile. I can't stand the old coot half the time, but that doesn't mean I want him to die. You still on hero duty, cowboy? I gotta tell you, you wear it well. From what I hear, you stepped up too. Stopping a panic in the Versailles room. No, that was a scam. I just wanted to make sure I was the first one off the roof. Yeah, whatever you say. Any word on Nicholas? They haven't found his body yet. But the 16th floor has been gutted. They're saying he's... There's no way he could have lived. to tell Lulu that her, her big brother, my, my big brother. You know, when we first met, I, I never thought I'd be able to call him. But now I can't imagine it any other way. Are you dead? You say sorry? I don't want to fight with you, man. I mean, that's why I'm just curious, you know. I don't know that Nicholas is gone. I mean, can you understand Nicholas was more than just his, you know, just the last name? He was a good son of mine. He saved Lulu's life. You know, he tried over and over to make peace with you. But the best you could have managed was to ignore even existed. You always judge Nicholas because of where he came from, not for who he was. You really are your mother's son when it comes to this stuff. They hit you hard. Me? I'm a simpler man. I didn't kill Nicholas, and I'm grateful for that. But I can't join you in your grief. Sure, Cameron was a friend. I owe him this much. No, you didn't exactly welcome his help. Well, neither did you, as I recall. You and I are beyond help, and I admittedly don't do well accepting it. I think he came close to figuring out what makes you tick, and it scared the hell out of you. Did he tell you that? No, just a wild guess. He could be an annoying nag, but he was damn good at what he did. Yes, he was. So are you ready to do this? No, but someone has to identify Cameron's body, and you and I are all he has left. Are we waiting for something? I was kind of hoping Xander might walk through the door. Natasha, Xander is either dead or he used the fire as a cover for his escape. Cameron insisted on calling him Alexander all the time. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell was wrong with both of them, quite frankly. They loved each other very much. They just didn't tell each other that. I don't know what they were waiting for. It used to make me want to tear my hair out. They were both so stubborn. They did come close every now and then to connecting the way a father and 
sons should connect, but they didn't do it. I understand that. I don't get this. I don't, I don't, I don't get this. I don't get how somebody who dedicated to his life to helping other people would end up all alone. Well, that's easy. He worked at it. At first, I didn't understand his obsession with helping me with my daughter, but I know that it's because he didn't want me to be without my daughter any more than he ever wanted to be without his son. You're kidding yourself. He tried to help you because he was in love with you. What are you going to do? Uh, Cameron was a good man. He deserves at least an attempt at a decent memorial. Hi. It's me, Lucas Lorenzo. Spencer. Uh, well, what can you say about Cameron Lewis except that he was as crazy as most of his patients? Which is probably why he was a good doctor. He, uh, he was an honest man, and he uh, told it like it was. He'd been to some dark places in himself, and he wasn't afraid of those places in other people. He knew what made seemingly intelligent people trash their own lives. Dr. Lewis died saving my son. Probably because he couldn't save his own. He uh, made mistakes like everybody, but he he did what he could to fix what he had broken. He was a good man, an honest man. I, I don't really believe that uh, the dead can hear me or see me, but just in case I'm wrong, thanks, Cameron. You were a good friend. Some speech. Well, he he deserved some kind of memorial. He was a good guy. So are you. Underneath all of that cynicism lies a good and compassionate heart. Have you been drinking? Stone cold sober and able to see what's right in front of me. Oh, Red. You know that kiss that never happened? Well, it meant something to me. And I think it meant something to you, too. You'll be there, oh, my... Hey, slow down. Don't break one of those pretty little ankles. Oh, I hope you haven't been waiting too long. I actually went back to the hospital to see Edward after we left the chapel, and that's where I was when I got your call, and I had to go and change, so I... What are you wearing? Blues gear. There's a great new blues trio playing over at the old roadhouse near Greenville. Blues trio? Blues, you know, blues, as in uh, my mother's hanging from the rafters and my papa ran away and my dog only one who likes me, but he's been sick, you know. What's the matter? You've never gotten into blues? You don't like to wallow in the muck of the real deal, the low down dirty? Hello. <laughs> We're supposed to be working at the Haunted Star. Remember that place, your so-called dream? Or is that some excuse you came up with to keep me around? You thought I called you to go to work? Well, it's a normal assumption, considering the haunted star opened two hours ago, and, well, you're the owner and the hostess. But it never occurred to you that I might want to just... 
social lives. Social lives? Uh, like a date? Well, I wouldn't... I w um, wouldn't really call it a date. Uh, it's more like... Uh, uh, what? Trip to the roadhouse to soak in some blues. You know, but it's okay if you're not interested. I don't... Oh, hey, I didn't... I didn't say I wasn't interested. I just, um... I wasn't prepared for you to ask me out. That's all. You need to be prepared. What happened to, you know, spur the moment spontaneity? You know, I've got the caddy gassed up. Let's take a drive in the moonlight. Hey, I, I can do a spur of the moment, okay? It's oh, just, I, I'm not I prefer a heads up. Well, I'm not seeing that spur of the moment thing here. Uh, well, it's just, um... Just what? Well, we kissed. Again, and... Well, we both agree that it didn't mean anything, so... Now, if you're telling me that you changed your mind, I... Would you like me to change my mind? Well, aren't we an interesting gathering? <laughs> now, tell me, if the three of us are on the pier, who's watching our investment? like the idea of our casino open and running unsupervised. You see, it makes the employees too comfortable. Next thing you know, we skim off the top. Oh, ye of so little faith. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Excuse me. But I personally interviewed and hired everyone who works at the Haunted Star. I can say that they are all above reproach, which is more than I can say for you, which is precisely why you don't get a say in how Luke and I run our club. Oh, <gasps> wrong again. You see, I actually have a, a great deal invested in our little venture. All right, you know what? I've had enough of you. You made nothing but a nuisance of yourself. Is that so? Yeah, you commandeer the place for mob meetings. You, you attract an unsavory element. And don't even think that I've forgotten about the time that you tried to cut Luke out of the club while he was out of town. Yeah, I heard about that. You know, that doesn't exactly engender faith. Uh, well, no, actually. <clears throat> I was trying to protect your interests. You see, Skye here was getting a little full of herself and trying to control the club, and she needed to be reined in. Still does, if you ask me. Yeah, well, no one did. We don't need your contribution to the Haunted Star, so why don't you take your business someplace else? I know I'd be so happy to see the last of you, and I think Luke would, too. Uh, hold on there, Blaze. That's not exactly true. Have you forgotten one very important detail? Faith is a homicidal maniac. True, but she's also a savvy investor. Oh, thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. Her participation guarantees notoriety. Plus, we all benefit from the percentage of laundering her money, which I explained to you already. Yeah, but you see, that was before you disappeared and left me alone with this bleach blonde barracuda. Before I had to stop her from murdering Justice Ward. Before she tried to kick us out of our own club. Is this a, a private rant, or can anyone chime in? Chime. Oh, good. Um, see, now that you're back and someone competent is in control, I promise to be on my very, very best behavior. See, I'd rather have you on my side than standing against me. I'm glad we understand each other. I look forward to doing more business with you. I'm breathless with anticipation. Don't disappoint me. You want to get the knife out of my back because it's a little hard to reach. Oh, come on, Blaze. Calm down. Oh, no, don't Blaze me. You just sided against me with a psychopath. Well, I think she's more of a sociopath, actually, but she's not so bad. Believe me, I've I, I, I danced with worse. Oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't see this before. You actually enjoy having that woman around, don't you? You, you like the treachery with a little murder thrown in. You, you're really having fun here, aren't you? That's somewhat true. Oh! Well, that is precisely why I will not go to any blues roadhouse with you. You're a, you're a terminally arrested adolescent, and that it's bad enough I have to work with you. Anything else would just be... What? Ugh. Never kiss me again. Do you understand me? Because if you do, oh, I swear, I'll give you murder. I'll shoot you myself. 